I will be presenting uh, the work that we've been doing uh, under Project One. Um, we Project One is, is covering a lot of uh, one a few aspects of, of the activity of the uh, Childhood Leukemia International Consortium, and I will first give you a little bit of background for those who don't know uh, who we are. So back in um, in 2005. Um, Pat and I uh, went to IARC uh, to discuss the opportunity of bringing several studies together to um, bring uh, more data to understand the etiology of childhood leukemia. Childhood leukemia is a rare disease. Although it's the first cancer in children, it's a rare disease. And that brings complexity when we start to analyze uh, environmental and genetic factors. Uh, not only it's a rare disease, but it's divided in different subtypes, and we believe that those uh, different uh, types of leukemia may have different etiologies. So we were pretty much, pretty much faced with the issue of, of bringing more, more studies together to increase our ability to uh, find um, uh, relevant risk factors. Um, the first... Um, informal meeting was uh, back in 2006 with uh, main investigators from uh, France, uh, Australia, Canada, and the United States. They just started to talk together and, 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 and formulate the feasibility of, of moving forward in, in bringing more studies around the table. And um, in 2007, we officially launched the, the international consortium and started to bring more studies um, into, into the group. Um, first, uh, two analyses were proposed in order to conduct a proof of principle that we could actually work together. One was, was looking at uh, maternal vi vitamin and folate intake and possibly MTHA4 uh, uh, variant and risk of childhood leukemia. And the second one was to uh, look at fetal growth and childhood ALL. The first uh, proof of principle was led by our group at UC Berkeley and the second uh, by group uh, in Australia. So since 2005, we've grown for, from five studies to um, 18 research groups in 12 different countries. And the numbers identify the individual um, uh, principal investigators of those studies. And you can see, I don't have a pointer here, but you can see that we have a pretty good coverage in Europe with uh, several uh, studies in UK, several studies in France, uh, Germany, Greece, Italy. We have uh, coverage in the United States ourselves, uh, including the US uh, COG studies. We have coverage in uh, Canada, um, South um, and Central America. We have Costa Rica and Brazil at the moment. Of course, we have Australia. They were one of the primary uh, um, study to come on board. We also have New Zealand over there. And the last uh, country to join was Egypt. Uh, she's, she's the only representative of, of um, this con African continent. So we really built uh, quite a lot from 2007 to 2012. It was important to take time to ensure we had all the large studies around the table, and, and, and it was a, a process to bring everybody around the table throughout those years. So as of right now, with uh, those studies being on board, we have mostly half of the studies, I mean, most of the studies are actually case control studies. That was the original um, premise of bringing those studies together. However, in the course of, of contacting uh, some investigators, we also brought some registry-based leukemia studies. And I'm, I'm breaking those uh, apart because they do offer different type of data that we can analyze. So while the majority of the studies are case control study, they contribute to the top to about half of, of the numbers of cases and controls. The registry-based uh, study, which are here, you see here, 
you know, large numbers, but limited amount of data are contributed to about, you know, a bit more of the half. So, you know, want to be cognizant of this difference in design. When we start to pull data, not all, all the studies could be of, of use. But at the end of the day, we have uh, accumulated 31,000 cases and uh, controls at the very end, about 50,000 uh, controls. Um, the advantage of pulling all this data together, as I was saying, was to identify risk for rare subtypes, which have been understudied in individual um, uh, series. So we can bring, with the consortium, we can bring almost 5,000 uh, cases of AML, uh, about half, you know, less than half will be coming from case control study. We can bring more, um, more um, cases of, of T cell. The count we have now is not fully representative of what could be done. Uh, we're still waiting for numbers from the registry uh, data. But you can see that the advantage of bringing all those studies together is to start to look at, at uh, rarer subtype of leukemia. The way CLIC is organized over the course of the years um, is into uh, the coordination group is at the center of the, of the CLIC organization. And every PI of each study is represented there. We, we really want to have the PI the opportunity to have a say and vote on, on every decision that, that will um, um, be important for the conduct of the consortium. So the coordination group is, is made of the principal investigators and some co-investigators if, if the PI requests to have uh, them on board. The management group is a smaller group that takes care of the running of the, of the meeting and uh, Pat is chairing the um, management group uh, in CLIC and we do convene about every month uh, by conference call and the members are from um, Canada, Australia, France, and ourselves. Uh, so we span over a different, uh, different time uh, uh, over the globe. Um, we also broke uh, the organization into core logistic group. We recognized at the beginning that there was a lot of um, procedures that had to be put in place to feel confident that, that PIs would share their data. So we have a core logistic group on uh, how to proceed to share data. We have a core logistic group on um, how to, to um, evaluate the quality of the um, characterization of the leukemia since it's a, it's a big part of our uh, goal. We have a, a group which uh, is, is uh, looking at the different method, statistical method that we should be using doing this type of pooled analysis. The interest group uh, were decided at the outset of the uh, um, establishment of the consortium to, uh, to direct some of the science around themes. And, and those are not mutually exclusive, obviously. But that was the, f you know, the first list of, of theme that the, the CLIC investigator felt they wanted to pursue. Uh, one was to look at more carefully about the risk associated with uh, AML and APL. Uh, the second one was around uh, risk factors uh, related to birth characteristics. Environmental exposure was a big, uh, big um, um, common interest uh, across all those studies. Uh, family history, genetics, of course, was a big uh, um, focus of, this, of the consortium. Looking at specificity of risk for infant leukemia, uh, looking at infection and immunity, occupational exposure, and more recently, some investigators in CLIC have wondered, can we actually also look at outcome and survival? So when we um, propose to do some work under the center, using, uh, using uh, this ability to work with uh, CLIC investigators, uh, CLIC was well established. We didn't, we didn't start from scratch when we uh, competed for this, this center. So we already had a good base in place. And um, we um, decided to focus on, on two uh, risk factors that had been uh, covered quite consistently across the studies and around the globe, which was to look at um, parental smoking, 
the risk of parental smoking and childhood ALL and AML, and the risk of, uh, I'm sorry, the, the risk of um, childhood ALN and AML also in relation to pesticide exposure. So those were the two key uh, risk factors that we picked under this project one in the center to try to move along and, and be able to look at main factors, uh, uh, main risk for subtypes and possibly uh, gene environmental uh, analysis. So because it was never meant that all those, those analysis would be done here at our institution because we have to share the, the uh, the load of, of, of work and, and, and the re research aspect. Uh, we have a, a system in place where different um, PIs are uh, showing interest in, in conducting those analyses. And we want to, this process to be as fair as possible. So it took us a few years to, to develop a, a procedure to request uh, uh, data from other groups and, and and um, have the agreement from all the PIs and, and eventually request the data and conduct the analysis. So the center has started, you know, almost three years ago, and I wanted to go over some of the activities that we have uh, done over those years. The first one was to go through this process of, of um, requesting the data and offering uh, the opportunity to other PIs to take upon those analyses. The second uh, uh, aspect was ourselves to lead one of the analyses, which is uh, looking at parental smoking and childhood AML. And we were the one to lead the effort of requesting the data, harmonizing the data, to conduct the preliminary analysis, to develop overall some quality control procedures, because as you work with somebody else's data, it's very important that you are unsure that you are using the data correctly. So we have developed here a lot of procedures to go back and forth with the original PI and share what we have as we move along to double check the frequencies, to double check that our uh, risk estimates are correct. We, we have two or three rounds of, of checking before we feel confident we can pull the data together. So we've, we've run those uh, procedures uh, all over the past years. And of course, we've worked with our statistician to uh, try to understand what are the issues of, of pooling data from heterogeneous um, um, data set and countries. Although we are not conducting all the analysis here at UC Berkeley, we do monitor the progress of the analysis being done outside. So this is part of our regular monthly uh, conference call with the management group. We keep track of all the progress to help the PIs if they have any issues uh, requesting data or analyzing data. We also will have, uh, starting next Monday, we will have actually our annual uh, click meeting where we, uh, all the PIs will be uh, coming here and we have um, allocated one full day to have separate workshop on all these different initiatives so everybody can be brought up to speed in terms of the progress. So as of today, I won't be able to give you too much progress on some of the analysis being done outside because we're going to be meeting next week and, and um, have this, this progress report then. In the meantime, while waiting for data, because that takes long uh, from the time you have the idea and you get all the data in your, in your uh, uh, database, that can take easily two to three years. Uh, everybody is uh, usually committed to their own research and it, it takes time and, and diplomacy and patience just to to allow uh, people to uh, work with you when, when it's possible. So it took, you know, some time to get data from all those studies. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we worked here to uh, compile a um, publication to describe the consortium, and uh, that paper has been uh, submitted at the Cancer Epidemiology Journal, and this is a nice overview of all the studies that are on board as of today. We uh, also discovered that as we move along really closer to using data and writing papers, that we have to work closely with the PIs to um, revise the authorship 
Authorship is a, is a pretty serious issue when you work with a lot of uh, PIs from different studies, and it took us several months, I would say, to really go through all the issues and make sure that everybody felt comfortable with the principle that we are using to establish the ranking of authorship. So um, this, is, this is not really related to science, but at the end of the day, it's part of it. In order to um, assess how well we could uh, study uh, subtypes, specific subtypes of childhood leukemia, like the main cytogenetic subtypes of ALL and AML, we uh, felt that it was very important to first um, conduct a, a quality control assessment of, of this type of data. The uh, studies have been going on from as far as from the mid-80s, to currently. So over this, these years, uh, the ability to um, characterize uh, subtypes, uh, cytogenetic subtypes of leukemia has changed quite a lot. And um, most of the time, data were available based on conventional uh, karyotype. And, and on, the, on the, re more the recent years, uh, some studies have applied more elaborated uh, um, um, method to characterize those subtypes. So we felt it was very important to go through a thorough a survey of the methods that were being used. The second part of our activities was also to understand what um, genetic data have been collected as of right now in every single study that we can use now. Those are the hanging fruits in order to do a gene environment interaction analysis. Well, that has been a long process as well to get this information from every single study. And as of right now, this survey is still ongoing. We haven't, you know, wrapped up all the um, details of the inventory right now. Another big part of our activity to sustain the consortium and to be able to bring uh, the investigators once a year or even more at some of, you know, interim workshop that we want to uh, conduct was really to have enough funding for uh, supporting the travel and the meetings. And, and without that, we feel that the consortium would be dead and would not be alive. So. As much as this project is supporting some of this aspect, it's never enough. And we have been very proactive in looking for uh, additional funding uh, from uh, NIHS and NCI to help us to support this, uh, these meetings, um, annual meetings. And finally, all uh, along those years where many institutions started to receive data and harmonize the data, came the very central issue of, of having a sustainable data coordination center. So we can coordinate our effort to merge those data and to keep this data into one center that everybody can rely on. And we've been fortunate that those discussions have made a lot of progress and it seems we're going to be able to work with IARC uh, as they offer to be the, the center for this uh, data repository. Okay, so now I'd like to go back to the actual aims of the project under the center. Uh, we um, had planned to analyze, on the left side you have the list of analyses that we have planned to do. We have planned to look at parental smoking and risk of ALL in conjunction to possibly looking at some functional SNPs and what would be the modifi modifying effect of those SNPs. These this, uh, analyses are being led at, um, at McGill University by Claire infant -Rivar. She um, had received the data from those uh, five institutions and she's currently conducting the analysis and we'll have an update next week uh, about that. I am conducting the analysis on parental smoking and AML and um, I was able to receive data from Brazil, France, Germany, Greece, Costa Rica, New Zealand, UK and, and our own data. And we have received the last set of data, I would say in July, June, July, so we were able to finish the data harmonization and start to do some preliminary analysis. 
The second big part of the aims is to look at home use of pesticide and risk of ALL and AML. And this is being uh, led by uh, Joachim uh, um, Schuss at IARC and, and one of uh, her, his postdoc, uh, Helen Bailey. And uh, again, they have received all the data as of today. They are finishing the uh, data harmonization and conducting the statistical analysis and we'll have some updates uh, Monday. The uh, fourth and fifth aspect of the project was going back to really understand what, what type of data we have in terms of, of um, cytogenetic subgroups and how, rely, how, how much do we rely on, on what is available from the studies. So I'm working with this uh, aspect of the study with Looping here from uh, UC Berkeley at the uh, Smith Lab. And she has been uh, really the driving force to, uh, to, to uh, bring some uh, quality control procedures and understand what's going on. So we started to work on this aspect of the study in the you know, early, in the first years. But because of competing uh, demands uh, in terms of requesting data from so many studies, we felt that we had to wait a little bit and to give every PI a little time to breathe because they've been so busy sending us data for the analysis for one, two, and three. But we're going to be very proactive to, you know, now that they are in good shape, to go back and, and have this aim move along. So I will talk a little bit about what we have now uh, for the analysis being led at UC Berkeley for the parental smoking and uh, risk of AML. We were able to receive um, data from nine studies, which uh, allows us to accumulate about 850 cases and uh, about you know, 6,700 controls. You can see that some studies are um, um, accruing more cases than others, like UKCCS is a very large study in, in the UK that has been going on for years and years. So they're bringing the most, uh, the most cases along with uh, Germany and, uh, and uh, Greece. I'm not expecting you to understand really what's going on in these slides, but this is what we have to do in order to harmonize all the data that are coming from those different studies that have collected information at different time window for the father, for the mother, with different definitions, different, different uh, um, codes that are being used. So we have to go through a very detailed inventory of what has been done before we can even assess what type of data will be able to be merged in order to analyze them. So at the end of this um, very thorough um, analysis of, of every study, we, uh, we think that we'll be able to use a, a different subset of analysis for looking at different time windows. And this is, this is a, a, a table that, that gives us an idea of we can use about 700 cases out of this group to look at the lifetime exposure to uh, uh, smoking. When we want to uh, look at uh, trimesters, for example, we want to have much less uh, uh, data to work with. So this just gives us an idea of, of how much we're going to be able to pull. In terms of dose response, the amount of cigarette being smoked, uh, the data are more sparse, and, and we are not going to be able to include all of them. The next slides are just showing a little bit of uh, the, what we're facing with when we pull data from different countries. Obviously, we're facing heterogeneity between countries. Uh, the lower uh, prevalence of smoking is, uh, is being seen in the United States, but you can see that France, for example, uh, has the highest prevalence of, of uh, smoking. When uh, we look at the whether or not the, the father or the mother smoked before conception, again, you can see you know, large heterogeneity between, between study and, and culture. And this cartoon is just showing up the heterogeneity of smoking during pregnancy, again, uh, across studies. 
this is, as of right now, the prevalence of exposure after birth, exposure to passive smoking for the child after birth. And again, this is consistent with what we see in the lowest uh, exposure to smoking would be in the United States, and one of the highest would be in Greece. Um, New Zealand is, is, is based on very small numbers, so those prevalence are very, very low. I mean, very unstable, possibly. So I'm turning back to the um, assessment of cytogenetic data within CLIC. Uh, this cartoon is a, a kind of a, a road map for us uh, to go through every step to understand uh, the quality of the data in every single study. So we have conducted the survey as of right now. We have conducted the survey as of you know, this cartoon. We had contacted every single study. Uh, we developed a questionnaire to ask them what type of data they had, what type of method was being used, karyotype, fish, PCR. Are they uh, working with uh, the full set of uh, cases that are enrolled in their um, studies? Or are those data coming from just a subset of cases? Are they just very selective, selective group of cases. We need to understand exactly the, the, the data that are uh, available to us and the one that are missing and why they are missing. A quick assessment of this survey is that most of them do have information from conventional karyotyping. Few studies, however, have uh, data from more elaborate method. Second point that we're facing is that we will have to deal with a very limited subset of cases for which we have um, cytogenetic data. Old studies uh, provided cytogenetic data on very, very convenient samples uh, that may not be representative of the entire uh, uh, case series. So we'll have to be careful when we start to analyze data by cytogenetic subtypes. So the next step uh, for that aspect of the study is to request the, the, the data from each PIs. Something that is very important and that was brought at, at several meetings is that we need to understand how the ratio of AML, ALL, B cell, T cell relates compared to population-based data. We know that we're working with case control studies. We know that uh, cases that are entering us, the studies in, in every, uh, in every uh, countries may be selected. Some were using registry-based recruitment, some were not. So we need to understand, do we have already a bias in terms of, of distribution of subtype to start with? So we will have to go back to every country and try to compare our uh, own uh, ratio of AML, ALL, B cell, T cell, and understand if we are comparable with population-based data.